Hey all, Diplomat here again, coming to you from the USA. And we are resuming with part 6 of the Chris Watts Discovery read-through. Uh, we last finished pa Discovery page 76, so we'll be starting on 77. And we had just finished reading Officer Brent Manley's uh, written up report. And these are uh, the notes, his handwritten notes, uh, which we'll get through pretty quickly. Um, sometimes they're a little hard to read, but bear with me. So we got Ruby Hill Drive, 6330, no info, door camera, but nothing on camera. 6325, no info. 6305, not home this weekend, mother-in-law was in and out during the weekend, we'll reach out to them. 6333, no answer. No contact at 6225, Saratoga, 2908, Saratoga, has ring camera, 6322, 6316, 6328, and 6311, Steeple Rock Drive. So I'm not sure if those are all addresses that didn't have cameras, but you may notice that a lot of these are not called out in the typed up report, and I wonder if they followed up with um, any that they did not get to see the camera. Gray truck, 5.15 a.m., 6.45, uh, still there. That's either a 6.15 or 6.45. 12 p.m., still there. 5.15 a.m., left, not normal for him. 2,500 or 3,500. Ringer will pick up at corner. Okay, white van, two times in area. Gone seven days prior to Sunday the 12th. Saw a van in daylight hours. Ann and Don, whatever the last name is, looks a lot like Chris's. Gwindora, someone, whatever the last name is, I'm sorry, I'm going to butcher it. 303 Coles, 10 a.m., entrance, Kipling, 470, phone tapped. Whose phone was tapped? Green dress, and it gives a 167... Dudley Road, Dudley Road, um, sorry, it's hard to read some of these handwritten notes, Sa Sergeant Vargo, uh, Payson PD, curly blonde hair, no vehicle, three to four days, two strollers, Stephanie Myers, Walter, has a bunch of names, Knights Inn, not sure if these are in different reports, but it certainly was not in the report we read above, a lot of this information. Last Handwritten note, 12 a.m. on 8 10 18 till present. Home Depot, Manager 7, Home Depot 119. Okay, supplemental report from Scott Coonrod, officer. On August 15, 2018, at about 22.45 hours, this officer responded to an Anadarko oil well site near Rogan, Colorado, to search for evidence. Upon arrival, I was advised by Colorado Bureau of Investigations that they had collected several pieces of evidence and placed them in evidence bags. Hair samples from the thief hatch on top of an oil battery, parts of a rake, a bed sheet, and other things had been collected. These items were given to Detective Balmover. We started excavating a potential dig site about 100 feet from the oil tank battery. The dirt appeared to have been freshly dug. At about 2,300 hours, we located the body of an adult female, which we believed to be Shanann. The body was decomposing and was removed at about 010 hours. The body was in a shallow grave. The buttock was approximately 8 inches from the top of the burial site. Weld County Coroner took possession of the body. Photographs were taken. Never gets easy to read this stuff. Still from uh, Officer Scott Coonrod. On August 16, 2018, this officer responded back to the well oil well site near Rogan, Colorado to check the oil tank battery for the missing children. A grid search around the oil well site was conducted. A piece of a rake was found. The rake piece was given to Detective Balmover. Anna Darko had vac trucks on site and began draining the crude oil out of the oil tank battery into a holding tank. The crude oil was then pumped into the vac truck using a hose with a screen on it. After the crude oil was removed from tank 17697, Colorado State Patrol hazmat crew removed the entry door. 
At about 15.30 hours, CSP Hazmat crew entered the oil battery and found who we believed to be Celeste. The juvenile was wearing a diaper. The body was decomposing and was completely covered in crude oil. Weld County Coroner took possession of the body. Anadarko then drained tank 17698 in the same manner. At about 1750 hours, CSP Hazmat crew entered into that oil battery and removed who we believed to be Bella. Weld County Coroner took, also took possession of the body. Photographs were taken and the removal was recorded on taser. It's incredible the additional victims uh, of things like this. You know, those that had to be on site to do all of this work, to see these things, take pictures. How could you, Chris? Next is a supplemental report from Officer Catherine Lines. On Friday, August 17, 2018, I received a safe-to-tell report stating that a woman who identified herself as Juanita saw on the news that a woman and her two daughters were found dead and that Chris Watts was to blame. She goes on to state that one of her Facebook friends has a daughter named Bella and that he mentions misinformation about having a wife. She stated that she has more information but wants to wait and didn't know what school, so she just chose one. The report has no contact information for Juanita. A copy of the Safe to Tell transcript has been added to the file. Please comment if you know anything more about this. This is a little strange and it's hard to understand some of these sentences. You know, about didn't know what school, so she just chose one. I don't know. Um, but comment if you know anything further on that. Okay, also Catherine Lines, 817. On Tuesday, August 14, 2018, at approximately 11.45 hours in the state of Colorado, County of Well, Town of Frederick, I officer Kate Lines responded to the police department and met with a search and rescue team and their canines for search efforts regarding the disappearance of Shanann Watts and her two children. After being briefed on the situation, I, along with Officer Perez, Deputy to catch, Boulder County Sheriff, Jane Zimajewski, and Jeff Hebert, search and rescue dogs of the United States, responded to the home of the missing individuals. Upon arrival, I contacted Chris Watson and explained to him that the Frederick Police Department brought in some extra resources, search dogs, to help in locating his family. With his permission, he allowed a full search of his home. Prior to the beginning of the search, Deputy Takaj explained what would be needed for the dogs to have a successful search. She explained the need to collect scent articles. While speaking with Chris about appropriate items such as shoes and clothing, she stated the importance of the items not being touched by anyone else. Each time Deputy Takaj asked Chris about specific items, he mentioned that he had in some way touched them. Deputy Takaj was able to collect the scent from shoes. Upon entry to the home, I immediately noticed a strong odor of cleaning chemicals. The home appeared spotless and the carpet had noticeable vacuum lines. As we walked to the kitchen living room area, I observed that the television was on a sports show. While standing by the back slider door, Deputy Takach inquired about the little girl's shoes on the back porch. Chris said that the girls wore them to a pool party and that the shoes had been wet, so he put them out to dry. During conversation, Chris mentioned that he had made the girls beds that morning and had done laundry. He said that he had a hard time sleeping and he is used to one of the, his little girls throwing chicken nuggets at him and the other one sitting in the high chair. So obviously this just screams of red flags here with the cleaning chemicals, uh, vacuum lines, um, uh, doing the laundry. It's just, if you're you know, there's going to be searches at your house. You don't want to touch anything in there. You don't want to make it more difficult for the police to find things, unless, of course, you're guilty. Chris was asked about Shanann's car and if she drove it to the airport, and he said no. Nikki dropped her off. It's the white car out front. He was asked if he drives it, stating the white car in the driveway. No. He was asked if his wife has a car, and he pointed to the garage and said yes. When asked if he drives it, 
He stated that he took the girls to a pool party in it on Saturday. Officer Perez commented to Chris that he can't imagine what he is going through. While speaking with Chris, he showed no emotion and did not seem to respond appropriately to the situation. Chris did not ask any questions or offer to help at any time. Chris's facial expressions rarely changed. However, when they did, he seemed to smile smirk inappropriately, displaying a lack of empathy specifically when speaking about his children. His voice remained low and even toned. His nonverbal cues were very apparent. Chris had very erect and almost tense posture, and his arms crossed the majority of the time. Chris lacked eye contact and appeared to be nervous, looking around constantly. Chris escorted us through the entire home, showing us each room, including the laundry room, where he dug through the dirty laundry and again mentioned that he was doing his kids' laundry. Prior to beginning the search, Chris was asked to step outside so there was no interference with the dogs. Deputy Perez remained with him and the front door remained open so that at any time he wanted to discontinue the search, he could do so and the information could be easily relayed. I entered the home with Jane and her canine, who she stated is a cadaver dog. As we moved through the home, Jane explained what type of scent the dogs alerts to. Jane mentioned several times that the dog alerted to areas where there may have been some sort of trauma or struggle, such as an argument, explaining that scent from people pulls and collects in areas. The dog did not locate any human remains. The search continued from the neighborhood clubhouse, west and then north, circling back to the home without success. Jane's dog was later taken to Chris's work truck, which was parked just east of his home. Jane stated that the dog detected but gave no hard command. However, the dog did not enter the vehicle, and the doors to the vehicle remain closed. While in the home, a track dog was asked to enter. As there had been some indication from the cadaver dog that a struggle or argument may have ensued. Jeff Hybert and his canine entered the home. Jeff stated that his dog showed interest in the unmade bed in the basement and an area just below the stairs, but did not do any final trained alerts. We exited the basement and went upstairs to the garage. No indicators were noted in the garage and we exited the home. After completion of the canine searches, the canine team was thanked for their help and they left. I remained in the area to assist with a neighborhood canvas, going door to door, handing out flyers and speaking with residents. At approximately 2015 hours, I returned to the PD and was told they were done f that we were done for the day. The reports and map track from the canine team members have been added to the case file. On Wednesday, August 16, 2018, at approximately 1530 hours, I reported for duty and was asked to respond to Aggregate Boulevard and Wyndham Ho Hill to hand out more flyers and contact people in and out of Wyndham neighborhood. At approximately 1800, I was instructed to sit on the south side of the house and not allow anyone in or out of the home. I remained at that location until instructed to respond to the front of the house at approximately 2200 hours. At approximately 2212 hours, a search warrant was executed. I was tasked with perimeter security, not allowing anyone not authorized to step on the property. At approximately 2216, I notified Sergeant Bakes that the tow truck arrived on scene. I maintained the crime scene log and at approximately 2328 hours after completion of the search warrant and evidence had been secured in patrol vehicles, I handed the crime scene log over to FET Officer Walsh and left the scene. Nothing further, Officer K. Limes. So we'll stop there for part six, uh, starting part seven on page discovery page 86. We'll pick up with Officer Ivan Perez. So uh, some interesting things there, of course. Uh, obviously more information about how much they were on to him. Um, Chris stuck out like a sore thrum, and it's good to see how much was uh, you know, being understood, how much they knew, and it, it's clear from their documentation here. Um, so, uh, more to come. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe buttons. I hope uh, you're enjoying going page by page with me, and um, we'll continue. So, thank you again, and have a great day.